I just think, Chloe, do you worry about where this gets us to? Because surely you can see, right, coming down the track, there's going to be... They, they keep saying that they're doing these sorts of things because they want to, to seem more diverse and tolerant. Well, this strikes me mm-hmm. as creating and fomenting a new intolerance, far from being the, the champions of anti-racism. They're actually adopting and, and proselytizing a new form of racism. Oh, it absolutely is a new form of racism. And I'll I'll echo what Alex said, which is if you take what these people are saying and switch the word white for another colour, everyone would be up in arms. So Mm. can you imagine if, you know, if we flip the Humza Yusuf case to, say, a white person moving to another country? So let's say me as a white person with a white partner, I move to an African country, which is, you know, say 99 plus percent black right and my child decides when they grow up to stand in the parliament there in that country can you imagine if they stood up and made a speech and said i think there are too many black people in this parliament can you imagine the outcry everyone would immediately say without question that that is downright racist and disrespectful to the people and the culture of that country so it just seems crazy to me that people like Hamza Youssef and the uh, Labour leader in Scotland are getting away with this nonsense. And and the other point that I want to make is, as you said, Darren, uh, the Scottish population is 96% white. That means that we should expect maybe only 4% of the Scottish Scottish leaders to be non-white. We we seem Mm -hmm. to live in an era where even if the population is 96% white, we think there's injustice if the you know, number of people filling university places mm. or parliamentarians isn't 50% BAME. I, I've, I've seen this at so many universities saying, oh, this university is institutionally racist because there are more white people than BAME students here. And I'm like, but hold on yep. a second. This is in a majority white country. And usually in these universities, it's say, you know, uh, 20, 30% students, if not more than yeah. that, non-white. But because the number is less than 50%, people think this is institutional racism. I mean, just learn some basic statistical skills, people. You know, Chloe, that's really important as well, because what's been going on from, again, coming from the left, coming from these very small pressure groups, is that they are implementing positive discrimination. So that's giving those 4%, 3% of people a massive leg up over the overwhelming part of the population. And we're actually seeing, you know, white young boys under the age of 25 really suffering as a result of this positive discrimination, rather than giving smart kids who might be an underprivileged part of society, giving them the leg up, you have to be a certain race or ethnicity to get that leg up. And so what what we're encouraging here and what Hamza Yusuf and and the Labour leader in Scotland are calling for is basically to to, to give priority to those small percent of people based on their skin colour. And now, if mm. I was to say, if I was to go to any other country and say, where white people are minority, and so you must give white people priority in job interviews, for example, they'd go, you're a racist. So this positive discrimination stuff is and racist be right. wrapped up. And they'd be right. It's wrapped up. It's just wrapped up in a different cloak. And again, so I think someone was saying that it's, it's wolves in sheep's clothing. They are racist. They don't like white people. You don't go on a tirade against white people and saying white, 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 if you don't like the fact that it's the person's skin color, not what they're actually doing. You know, rather than criticizing those people based on their actions, he's criticizing them based on their skin color. When has this become acceptable and why is it only acceptable against white people? Uh, Corinne says uh, Yusuf just joins the other two racist anti-white two being Lamy and Abbott. And and of course, I, I would it. say Anna Sawa joins them on those benches, the Labour Party leader in Scotland. Mm. I think Scotland has a pretty dark future to look forward to, if I'm honest, and that breaks my heart. You know, I, I think of when I think of Scotland, I think of enlightenment values. I think of how much good through the British Empire, Scotland, which Scotland played a pivotal part in, by the way, but there are SNP are pretty reluctant to acknowledge that fact uh, and uh, a pivotal role in advancing ideas and trade and wonderful things to the world. And now, look at it now. What does it do now? Well, it has a, a hate crime factory. It sets up anti-white resentment. It, it looks down up and sneers at absolutely everything that it was uh, ever good at and good for. And I just I look at Hamza Yusuf and I think you 
well, I loathe him actually. I loathe him. I would say that because I think he, I think he has a unique, horrible, divisive political cancer, and I say that not. I don't say that lightly because I, I think I look at people like my grandfather, right? He was a miner. Uh, he worked down the pit from about, well, he was in his very early teens, if not younger than that. And he had white lung. He, he had respiratory issues for the rest of his life and he couldn't fully extend his arm from being down in those mines for such a long time. And then you look at my brothers, right? Their father, an alcoholic and... Uh, they they were in and out my one of my brothers at least in and out of factory work competing with uh migration cheap migration who could uh, work for cheaper wages what privilege have they ever had in life every single white man that i've just mentioned there what privilege have they ever had in what in life mm. as a consequence of their skin color how dare you mm. say that i can think of no more racist an idea than the suggestion that an entire collective of people through their inherited uh, characteristics, immutable characteristics, are somehow privileged in some way. These are the kinds of mm. ideas that meant that the Jews were persecuted. These are the kinds of ideas that meant that the communists went after the Serbs, right? The, this is These are the ideas that have been responsible for mass murder around the globe throughout history. There is a unique evil and it needs to be called out. So I will describe Humza Yusuf as a cancer and I don't care if the bobbies turn up at my bloody door. There we are. You know, uh, you know, Darren. I'll just add quickly to that as well because that that it's it's a whole mindset, and it's not just people like it's not just people from from Bain back backgrounds, black ethnic minority people. It's not just them. It's a lot of white people as well who seem to be doing who seem want to be seen to be doing good and get get sort of a, a pat on the shoulder by somebody who also thinks like them. It's it's a cancer in our society. It's why it's called a mind virus because it really does eat away at any facts or any grounding of science whatsoever. You're seeing it in TV adverts. I know that's something people talk about all the time. There is always a white person with a black person, or that there has to be this weird 50-50% balance, despite the fact the country is not representative of that. And it's again, because they're worried about these small four or 5% of very, very vocal people who are saying, oh, that was a very white TV advert. Who gives a crap? Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. If it's or a, a white very advert? white balcony. Remember that one? A very white yes, balcony. Yes, I do. At yeah. Palace. Yes. It's like, yes, there are a white family, you silly ass. White family. Can I not and have Chloe... my white relatives over without being called out? You know? Just, Chloe, do you think the narrative will change, Chloe, when actually ethnic minorities, if you consider London, for example, there's, there's a, a chance that white people in London could be a minority uh, in mm. our lifetimes. Do you think actually that the language around ethnic minorities and the protection of ethnic minorities will change somewhat when actually it's white people that are in the minority? I, I, I well, I hope that we don't get to a point where white people are a minority in Britain and we're completely taken over by uh immigrant populations i think that would be a great shame but in terms of the question of are we going to turn the tide on this mm. i i hope that we do i think as with this as with the trans issue and a lot of other stuff the benefit of it getting to a really insane point is that people suddenly realize how crazy it is and get put off it right the the trans movement wasn't a big issue that people were pushing back against until the point where they say started going after the kids and started doing absolutely insane stuff invading women's spaces uh you know men with penises getting into pools with young girls and competing against them it was only when it got to that insane point that people started pushing back and i feel like we're turning the tide on that and i feel like with this especially with all the flag stuff that we've discussed which everyone can see is absolutely bonkers people are starting to push back against this anti-white sentiment. Um, I think in terms of the public mood, I think it's going to be easier to change that. I think what might be difficult is to say, get institutions to revoke certain positive discrimination um, procedures in place, you know, that are already say, you know, down on paper, part of their policies, to get them to revoke those, that's going to be uh, more difficult. So for example, you, you spoke about how unprivileged a lot of white young men are mm -hmm. in this country. And, and I understand how privilege can, say, be linked to, to money in some way. Uh, you might have some universities want to uh, help but students. But that's class, Chloe. That's class, right? That's not ethnicity. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's the point. That's the point 
point I'm getting to is if there is going to be any positive discrimination, then OK, like make make it about something like uh, the income that you had growing up. What we have, what we see at universities, I've seen it at my universities, is students of colour being given an, adva- an advantage, even though a lot of those students are, say, international students with super rich parents with a ton of cash who they're far more privileged than the rest of us white lot. Um, but just because of the color of their skin, the university has considered them to be underprivileged. And I think that's a, you know, a massive fault in the system, but it's gonna be quite difficult to get, you know, it would be very controversial for an institution to say, rip up uh, a rule like that, that's already on paper in their policies. Mm, yeah. so I think so- the public mood is changing, but it's gonna take time to change in, in workplaces, universities, the systems they well, have. But- have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.